Here we are. Hello. Hello. Happy Saturday. Welcome, everybody. Whether you're watching live this morning on Saturday, the day before Easter, or you happen to be watching later, welcome to the Traveling to You Knit. We are all of into you studios. We're here every single Saturday morning at 930 in the morning Eastern time to talk about yarn and knitting and crocheting and all kinds of foolishness in between. That's Carolyn over there nodding her head. She's got the Easter trees behind her. You're like flanked by Easter trees. I'm Michelle. Carolyn dyes all this gorgeous yarn and I just talk a lot. That's what I do. My job is literally one sentence, talk a lot. No. One sentence of two <laughs> words. Happy Saturday, Sharon. Tulsa Trio's in the house. Connie, Karen Burnett. Hi, Karen. She says, happy Saturday from the very sunny UK. I sent you an email this week. I hope you got it. We're going to try to meet up. Deb, good morning. Cynthia, Valera, Luann, Kim, Laura, Tracy, Mary, Lonnie, Star, Carol, Deborah. I love it. Laurieann, Katrin. Good grief, Connie, all kinds of people. Kathy, welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Saturday. There's Liz Green, too. She said, my phone with Instagram is about 35 seconds behind YouTube. Oh, dear me, that would whew, that would confuse my brain. Yeah, so there's already a lag between us and YouTube, and then there's another lag, yeah, with Instagram. It's just lag city all the way. I am feeling pretty good today. I got to tell you, I'm very excited about my Yoon. I'm just rolling along. We're going to talk about that in a little bit about our Yoon make along. And by the way, it is not too late to get in on the Yoon make along. I promise you. We've got very exciting things. Bridgerton mystery box right now, which I do not have in front of me because it's a Bridgerton mystery box. Imagine that. <laughs> Who doesn't like getting surprises in the mail? I love getting surprises in the mail. Yeah. So this is season three of Bridgerton. Is that right? Yeah. So it's Penelope and Colin's story. But I did notice in some of the trailers, it looks like uh, Lord Anthony and Kate are back this season. So, Ooh. yeah. I like That's it. very exciting. So we really had... Um, by popular demand, everybody wanted another Bridgerton mystery box for season three. And so we're like, we can do that. Yeah. So good goodies are lined up. Gorgeous yarn, of course. Now is the time to order it. Carolyn has put in the listing the ship date so you know exactly when it will ship. So we're very excited about that. That ships after we get back from Scotland. Is that right? But right around the time it's released. Is that correct? Yeah. Right after we get back and just before the release date so that and it's released in two parts, but before the first part gets released that way, um, you should be having your goodies and your yarn to do all sorts of fun stuff with. Absolutely. So you choose the base and how many hanks you want. You can get up to three hanks. Is that right, Carolyn? Yep. If for some reason you want more than three hanks of that yarn, all you have to you can do it one of two ways. You can either send us an email and we'll set up an addendum to your order for additional hanks or because you purchased the mystery box, you have access, exclusive access to that particular colorway, which means once you get it, if you fall in love with it, you can place a special order for it. So that is a nice thing to do. So once you see it and you're like, oh, I need this for a sweater, you can absolutely place a special order for it on any of our regular bases that we maintain in the shop. So your box will include gorgeous yarn dyed by Carolyn. It will include goodies inspired by the show on theme goodies. And it will also include a QR code that you'll be able to scan to get more details and some suggested patterns. Now, keep in mind the suggested patterns. We basically find patterns that have some connection to the show, usually in one way or the other. We find patterns that that deal with various yarn weights and have various yarn requirements. So it's not a guarantee that your yarn that you purchase is going to fit perfectly with one of those patterns. But one of the nice things about the yarn that Carolyn dyes up for these special boxes is that typically they benefit from the addition of like a solid or a semi-solid. So if you want to use them for color work in a sweater or something along those lines, many times you can put some of your stash yarn with it order some additional yarn out of the shop and put together a really nice um, curated color collection for your project. Or you can simply place a special order for more yarn. 
So we try to do the whole scan of the bases in terms of the weights that we offer in the mystery boxes. So there's something for everybody. And the thing that I like about seeing um, suggested patterns, it just widens our exposure to more patterns. Who doesn't like seeing some patterns that maybe somebody else selected that wouldn't necessarily be on my radar? That's one of the things I like about suggested patterns. I may or may not use it for something it was suggested for, but I might use it for yeah. something else later. Yeah. You know, it occurred to me what might be fun, and we didn't offer it in the selections, hindsight being what it is, uh, a sock set. So if you ordered it and you think you might want to turn yours into a sock set, let us know. And we can, like Michelle said, put a, an addendum on there with some minis so that you get a sock set out of it. Absolutely. We've got a lot of sock knitters for sure. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So order your Bridgerton box. That's only going to remain open for a limited time because we are in the throes of preparing for our trip to Scotland. Yes. So you'll want to go ahead and get your order in this weekend would be ideal. Um, we are limiting the number of orders to some degree because we can't be overwhelmed with them because of other commitments that we have. So keep that in mind. Now's the time to do it. Mary says, I never would have thought about you if you hadn't suggested it. And I'm chugging along on it. That's great. And that was actually thanks to Maria. Maria is the one who suggested the Yoon. And we're really thankful for it because we're doing a little chugging of our own on the Yoon. So that is absolutely fantastic. So yeah. Richardson Mystery Box is the really big news this week. The link is in your newsletter, or you can also just search Bridgerton Mystery Box on our website and find it right there. Yeah. Yay. I'm looking forward to all of it. Yeah, me too. All me of too. it for sure. A couple other quick things I want to mention that's in the shop this week is chimney soot. I, I am partial to gray. Can you tell? Look, it's virtually the same color as my sweater. Hmm. You might have to do something in that color. Oh, I think I am going to have to do something in this color. I'm pretty sure. And I've already been pairing it with things. Also, I'm getting ahead of myself, but the Dusky Trio is back on Twain and we have it on Homer as well. Check out chocolate raspberry ganache with chimney soot. It's kind of hard to see the color, but there it is. Yeah. Hey, that actually looks very cool. I would not have thought of those together. I do want to say really quick, um, so like chimney soot, it's only on Homer, which that happened because of a happy accident. I'll just admit it in the dye studio. But one thing I wanted to say, it occurred to me because I was um, with Michelle traveling a little bit upcoming and then we're going to Scotland. So you might in the sneaker peekers should love it. But in the next couple of weeks, like you might see odds and ends and coming out and be like, well, why was this released? Why? Why is it only on this base? Things like that. Well, it, it might look disorganized, but it's actually because of the greater organization of projects <laughs> that stuff is coming out willy nilly in the next couple of weeks, just so you know. <laughs> it looks willy nilly. Well, you're really good. I, I always admire this about you. You're great at running a really efficient dye studio. So she looks at what's coming down the pike and to make sure that everything's done most efficiently with the least amount of waste in the dye studio. And so oftentimes I, I feel like that's kind of part of what's driving what we see. I've learned not to question it because you absolutely know what you're doing. And I know that if something seems weird, there's a reason for it. And that's one of the things I appreciate about our operation and what you do is that we do try to limit waste, try to limit all of that and have the most efficient and streamlined process available in the dye studio. I mean, it is like an industrial process. So yeah. to some degree. So, yeah, but that's good. Very good point. Yeah, there's going to be lots of interesting out of the ordinary things happening as we prepare for the trip to Scotland and how all of that, how all of that works. Since I mentioned it already, I'm going to go ahead and show our Dusky Trio is back. Dusky, not Dusty, not Dusty. It's Dusky, even though I intentionally, I, I, I keep appear, appearing to intentionally write Dusty. It's not Dusty, it's Dusky. <laughs> So there it is. So you've got Teal the Cows Come Home, which is this gorgeous teal. It's a little difficult to see right here. You've got Copper, of course, which is a colorway we know and love. And then we've got this chocolate raspberry that is absolutely luscious. It's so deep and just absolutely delicious. You just want to dive into it. And these colors look so, so great together. Now, the nice thing is we've got a few. Oh, I'm dropping yarn everywhere. We've got a few of the party packs still available as well with the minis. Get yourself a Dusky Trio on Twain 
and a party pack, and you've got all kinds of sock possibilities going on there. That is Sockapalooza, if I've ever seen it. Mm -hmm. So that is a great, great thing to do. Go ahead and snag those because I don't think those party packs are going to be back. So if you haven't gotten your Dusky Trio, your party pack, now's the day to do that. Have a great big Olive and To You mail day. Who doesn't love getting that stuff in the mail? Oh, yeah. Too much fun. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, I'm really excited to get to whips. This is earlier than we usually do whips, but can, can we can we get to whips? We've got a lot of them. Okay. And I'm super excited at seeing what everybody's been working on. So okay. we're going to roll with the whips real quick. Plus, I'm excited to show you my progress on my Yoon, and I want to see yours. So let's do whips first. All right. Just can't help but do the dance. There you uh, go. Yes, this one. So Lydia finished this for her daughter who recently graduated and it's in pomp and circumstance and it's the Luna tea. How sophisticated and gorgeous is that? It oh. is. I love that. Keep in mind as we're going through the whips, all of these links are included in your show notes once they're up on YouTube. That is beautiful and how appropriate for pomp and circumstance for a recent grad. Yeah. Perfect. Next up, Cynthia Titus. She split off her sleeves of her yoon. We've all been drooling over her yoon. She yeah. did the colors in the groove was her Homer, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then I think Barry was her Bronte. And look how that Barry halo kind of smooths all those color changes out and in the groove. I love it so much. Fabulous. Love it so much. All right. And then here is Maria's progress on her yoon. She's actually using, um, it says Play-Doh, but she's using Shelly. Maria, you mistyped. I hate to say it, but you did because I, I dyed the yarn. I know she did it on the Shelly base. <laughs> and she of course, worsted base. Huh? She did a worsted base. Yeah, well, um, because that's basically, you know, if you think about it, you're holding DK and, and lace weight together. Oh, she didn't use a, a Bronte. Okay. Right. So she chose, um, she just chose to go with plain, well, not plain, straight up worsted on fingerlings, the col colorway fingerlings. But yeah, it's on the Shelly base. Um, so yeah, she's, and I know she's past this because she said she's already started her short rows. So, yeah. Oh, cool. I love she named her sweater Tater because it's fingerlings is the yarn colorway. Oh, very cool. Laura Blair's got a new cast on this week, Bird Watcher with Happy Hour on Twain. And she really loves that purple. Me too. It's a tonal colorway. It is beautiful. Yeah, Stunning. Good. All right. And then Star has also, okay, so she's finishing her increases. This is her Yoon also. I think she's using the same color combo that I am. She's using Out of the Mist uh, for her DK. And then she's using, what are we using on Bronte Slate? <laughs> what is that colorway? What is the colorway that I am knitting with? So, but yes, yeah, Star's Yoon is beautiful. Very nice. All right, Faith, she's got two projects going on. She's working on both a crochet and a knit project. Her crochet, she says, is the Kimmy Cardi. I think it's the Kimma Carmi Cardi um, by Tony Lipsy. Looks really good. And apparently Tony Lipsy's headed to her local yarn stop. So she's hoping to have this finished by then. And Fair. then... Oh, am I doing this one? Okay, so this is also Faith, and it's her Adriana sweater doing um, Tolkien DK, and I'm not sure what the colorway is, and then she's also using uh, pairing it with a mohair, so that's awesome. Yeah, I love that she's doing two different crafting projects at the same time. Kim Jackson's got her socks going on. This is from her box of socks. Look at that. Ah. Look at that colorway. I love it so much. Earth shattering. And then Cherry's Jubilee are, was the mini. And look at how earth shattering did that kind of pseudo striping. Yeah, I love it. I didn't I, know that when I dyed it. Although, like we've said before, with the short color repeats, that does tend to happen in socks. So those look great. And that was from her box of socks subscription that she did. Love it. Oh, Julie. Oh, I'm in love. This is her second Gossamer twist. And she did it um, on vintage in the on the Atwood base. 
But um, yeah, it looks gorgeous. She's probably afraid to block this one because it takes so long to dry. <laughs> yeah. But you know, those are the coziest sweaters. I'm taking one of mine to Scotland. Yeah. One of the customer twists. And then Ann Warner, of course, what? She did socks. I'm surprised. Okay. <laughs> These are socks for her grandson, a plain sock pattern done in Spirit of Freedom on Twain and Adelia Don't Dally on Twain. Both are left over from her husband's socks. Look at that. Getting the most out of the yarn. Absolutely. I love really that good. combo. Ugh. Yeah. I love it too. They look fabulous. And then Anne again, she did a hat. She had um, spotted blue leopard. I think that was one of a kind on Twain. And then Bronte, and I forget, she said it in an earlier post. I forget, it was a blue um, Bronte, but it has made such a beautiful marled pattern. I love it so much. Um, it's called Hat. The hat pattern is called Hat from Wool Addict. And I had a hard time finding the look of that. So um, there was that. It's got a weird noise happening. I don't know what's, what's a funny noise happening. Weird. Anyway, I would love one of those hats. Let me just tell you. I'm like, can I whip one of those up before Scotland? Probably not. Um, okay, here we go. Tracy Ann, FO Friday. Actually finished two Fridays ago, but forgot to post. These are her Christmas Day cast on using the Christmas 2022 sock set. How nice is that? And again, she always does such a great job staging her photos. Mm, she does. Oh, Lonnie has done a fabulous job yet again pairing colors. She is doing the 24 Birds Make Along by Helen Stewart. And that first color that you see in the center is buttercream. And then she has gone into Dole Whip. And I'm trying to remember what she told me that the next color was going to be, but I forget. But when she said it, I was like, oh, it's going to look so good. So yeah, she's Absolutely. amazing. Absolutely. Just think of that Dole Whip buttercream. Ooh, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Something new to try. And then onward, she's still working on the second half of Refracted Twilight by Lisa Ross using last year's Olive and To You Spring Minis and Egg Hunt. I love how she's kind of freestyling with those colors. Yeah. It looks great. You all work on some of the most amazing projects. I'm always inspired by the things that the Yarny U's are working on. They always look so good. Mystery Punch, she said. Was that that? Was yeah. Mystery? That was the colorway? Yes, that is what she said. Um, but now I'm thinking, well, no, I don't remember because that was a one of a kind colorway, right, Lonnie? So, I mean, I have faith that it's going to look good because Lonnie picked it, but I don't even remember what Mystery Punch looks like. So why was I thinking, oh, yeah, it's going to look so good? Probably because Lonnie's doing it and she always picks good colors. She really does a good job with colors. All the yarn I use do a favorite of Fantastic job with that. All right. Show me your Yoon. Show me what you're working on. All right. Well, I'll be honest. I didn't make that much progress. That I think this is the back of my sweater here. Um, so I, I did some. And I'm to be honest, I I don't I haven't measured how far down. I think she says it's like 15 inches you're supposed to go from the top and then you split. And I, I wonder if part of the reason I haven't knit on this the last two days. And I think part of the reason might be that I'm indecisive about where I want to split and do, um, if you know what the yoon looks like, and I of course do not have my pattern right beside me, but, um, you know, it splits and then you've got the front and the back rib. Yeah. And I think I'm very torn about, do I want to make it more like a traditional sweater and then just take it down and do kind of a split hem at the waist, or do I really want to go full bore and follow what the pattern says? Do you want my opinion? Yeah. I'll give you my opinion for you. And then yeah. we're going to talk about my situation. Yeah. You are the perfect person to go full bore, do it the way the pattern says. It'll be something completely different in your closet. You can always wear a tank underneath it. Mm -hmm. And it, I, I, I think for you, that's the way to go because you can absolutely wear that with that super high split and it'll be unlike any other sweater you've got. And then it'll, I, when I think of decisions, I think of them in the extremes. And so you'll have extremes of sweater designs to choose Ooh, from you. in your closet. Mm -hmm. So that's what I think. I think okay. you should go for it. Okay. That's my opinion for what it's worth. I like it. Yeah, absolutely. So how far along are you? 
Well, first of all, Cindy says, do you plan to start the ribbing and maybe split after some ribbing complete? Oh, that's an interesting thought. So do some ribbing in the round and then split. So you have a uh, consec, you know, ribs in the round. And then that's an, in I never even considered that. That's curious, Cindy. Yeah. Are you going to do that, Cindy? Hmm. Well, Mary Nielsen says she did a combo of full bore and a little bit my way. I want to know more about that. I want to know what yeah. that means. I want to see a picture because I don't think Mary's posted a picture in a couple of days. So interesting. Huh. Yeah. Okay. I do not intend to go full bore because I am a woman of some girth and I don't think that it would look all that great on me. So let me show you my progress. Let me see here. If I show it from the back, it looks like more than the front, of course, because the back is longer. So there's my progress. It looks I've done, good. I've done a fair, yeah, I've done a fair amount. I think you and I are about the same length. I might have, you know, a quarter of an inch longer than you, but not much. Um, I am absolutely in love with this sweater. I cannot wait to wear it. I'm, I'm just like, I cannot wait to put, to put it on. Mm -hmm. I am a little over 15 inches now on the measurement. It's like, what is it? 40 or 41 centimeters. And it translates to, to 15 inches, basically. Yeah. Um, I measured last night and I'm there, but I just, and I'm not quite ready to put it on something and try it on. I just don't want to do that just yet. So I too am indecisive about where to start my ribbing, but I don't think I want to go full bore. I think I want to go just a little less than full bore, like just a little less, like maybe another inch or another inch and a half. Mary's yeah. screaming at me. Try it on. I agree, Mary. I don't understand. And if she were here, I would pull out my 50 inch cable and just do it for her and make her try it on. But oh, I might go to Lakeland today. Um, <laughs> you gotta do the work. Oh, bring your sweater tomorrow morning when we meet. I'll bring my cable and you can try it on. Really? Yeah. At 6 30 in the morning at Starbucks. Yeah, why not? Why not? Okay, we'll do it. Sounds good to me. Okay. Um, there's something stuck for some reason in my, that's interesting. Hmm. Um, okay. So let's see here. Um, Mary says start starting ribbing before the split might hang odd. The ribbing will pull in a bit. Hmm. Mm. That's interesting. Cindy said she did try hers on. That was smart. She says she wants to go a little bit longer than the pattern calls for. Yeah, I'm I'm right there with you, Cindy. Totally yeah. with you. I'm very bothered by something. There, I got it finally. It was like pulling a stitch out. There was like one of the dogs got something on it or something. So Cindy's smart. She tried hers on. I guess I'll do that. Um, that would make sense. So, but I, it, Lonnie says it looks warm for Florida. It does. Mm -hmm. I get that. But <clears throat> I like to travel to colder climates and you know, it's not going to be all that cold today. And I'm wearing a turtleneck this morning because it was chilly this morning and I'm cold more often than I'm hot. So I am just, I, I am in love with this sweater. I did, it occurred to me, you know, I do have a tendency to do patterns that I like more than once. I will do multiples of them. Um, and it occurred to me, this pattern would be so easily modifiable. You could make it a turtleneck. You could make it a traditional with traditional ribbing, or you could do a split ribbing hem that's not quite so exaggerated. You could do any number of things with it. So, you know, it makes sense. Yeah. Liz says, I think the higher split would be perfect for young ladies. And that ain't me. So makes you look hip. Yeah. So the, uh, the other thing that I'm worried about was that I ended up not doing all of quite all the increases. So my stitch count is a little bit different. And when I was reading her ribbing instructions, they seemed a little bit off. So I'm curious, Mary, is it basically just knit two, purl two? Is that the pattern that you're going for? Because I know she says, I don't know, something like slip one and then knit. But then she says something like your pattern is knit two, purl two, knit two. And I'm like, well, isn't that the same as just knit two, purl two? Like what? Unless she wants it to end with a knit two, that would make sense. So maybe it's supposed to each side like where it's split is supposed to be, you know. Knit. It's got that really pretty edge on it. I think that's yeah. the issue. See that, that really, really pretty edging. Yeah. 
So, and I, I think that might be because you end with a knit two. So I got to make sure that my stitch count is right. Or so, at least odd or even right. Yeah. In other words, make it so that it comes out correctly. So I, I got to figure that out too. Yeah. I was so excited when I did the short rows and the increases because I fully expected to get to the end of all that and have my stitch count be wrong. So I was just like, okay, what's acceptable two or four off? Cause I can, you know, fix that without it being too obtrusive. I was bang on oh, dead wow. on the money. I was so proud of myself. However, <laughs> I will tell you that later on when I got to the end of all the increases, I was off by, I think three stitches, one stitch in one section and two in another, I think, no, it was one stitch in three sections. So I had to, I just, you know, knit two together or, or did a make one and added it back in. I don't think you'll notice it with how busy this looks. Um, so I, that was off by like, I think, I think, I think three stitches the whole way, which I have no idea how that happened because I was being very careful, but you know, who knows? Yeah. The dog jumped on me and I forgot for a minute. I mean, there's, there's absolutely no telling. Um, yeah. I did want to mention on mine, I am using true on Homer and then I'm using silver linings on Bronte. And that's how I get that beautiful marl that I am so in love with. Those would look great with black leggings. Oh, exactly. That's exactly what I think as well. Um, so we had a little a little discombobulation at Olive and Two U Studios this week. I know nobody is surprised by that. We are very transparent about the fact that we make mistakes all the time. When Monica and I sat down this week to do our weekly Yoon video, let's talk about the Yoon. At the moment we were going live, I couldn't remember if we had done it on YouTube or Yarny Use. And I had thought I remembered that we said we would do it in the Yarny Use and then upload it to YouTube. Yeah, I was wrong. So the Yoon, let's talk about the Yoon, video number three from this week, where Monica and I are chatting about the Yoon, is in the Yarny Use. Now, I've pinned it to a featured post, which means that when you go into the Yarny Use, if you haven't looked at it, it should be up towards the top for you. But one of our great Yarny Use this morning shared with me that she had to dig a little bit to find it. So you can dig a little bit to find it. You can also do a search using the little magnifying glass in the Yarny Use and either search Yoon or search my name or search Monica's name. And hopefully it should come up for you. So if you have trouble finding it, let us know and we'll try to tag you in the comments because we want you to see that. We want you to see that because we do this week in video three, I actually go through in painstaking detail, tell you exactly what to write and exactly how to get through those short rows. So if you're still a little nervous about it, we tell you the details um, and how to isolate the row that you're working on, because that helps your brain to do as little work as possible while it's trying to compute all the other things you have to be thinking about while you get through that particular section of the sweater. You can absolutely do the sweater. It is very accessible, but it does take a little bit of concentration. And I wanted to mention some of the tools that I've been using to help us out with that, um, to have, you know, we're back to our cocoa knits. We love cocoa knits because they're beautiful and functional tools. This is the accessory roll that I believe Cindy Titus won a few weeks ago. We've got a few of these in the shop. They're really helpful. You can stash your notions in them. It's washable paper. Yes, you can actually throw this in the washer or hand wash it. It wears much like leather would wear. You get a patina and some wrinkles in it. It's beautiful. The thing that I love about this particular accessory roll is that these snap out and then they open up. So you can take just one of these with you or throw it in a project bag with your items inside of it. It's also kind of fun because it comes with different colored cords so that you can actually kind of customize it a little bit, which is really nice. Let me put this back together. We've got some of these in the shop. They're great tools to have. And then also the maker's board that I love for um, all sorts of things. I love it to hold paper patterns and that kind of thing. And I'm not going to take this completely out, but we've got these maker's boards. They work with magnets, so you can actually put your pattern on it. And if you use the ruler and gauge tool, then you can actually isolate things easily so you can keep track of your row. These are wonderful. I think that we have them in two different colors, the gray and 
the craft color. We may only have one. I'm not sure, but these are wonderful. They're a little heavy, but they're really um, wonderful. I know a lot of stitchers who use them for not just knitting or crochet, but for a cross stitch, for, you know, any kind of stitching where you need to pay attention to the pattern. They're really, really handy. And then a couple other quick things. Um, sweater bags to wash your sweaters in. These are wonderful, especially if you have larger sweaters like me, because they get heavy with the water and then they kind of stretch out. You don't want your sweater stretch, stretching out. Your sweater brush is really great for keeping lint off your sweaters. And then these underrated bags, Coco Knits Jute Bags. You've got yours, do you, Carolyn? There it is. They this is perfect for him. any like blanket, big sweater. I got my yoon in there. Yep. They hold so much. So we recommend you treat yourself right now. Do some cocoa knits and yeah. You know, I recently came across the video of uh, the cocoa knits video on washing the paper products. And she tells you like how you can, if you want the more crinkled look, what to do. And then if you don't like that, if you like it. And so she showed the difference before and after. I should probably maybe link that in the yarn you use or something, but it's a good video. That's great. Teresa said she loves her bag. They're great. And they're like $12. They're really inexpensive. Mm -hmm. uh, order yourself one of those and then some things to go along with it. Hey, Mary's got another tip about the Yoon. Beware that the armhole is a little larger than a typical sweater. The body might be shorter than you realize. Bigger armholes will get you there quicker. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm very happy about the armhole. I noticed it looked larger than the average, which made my heart sing. Made me super, super happy. Yeah, it's fun. Okay, can we talk about Scotland for a minute? Oh, yes, do. Our trip is coming up. So we sent out a very um, comprehensive email earlier this week. If you're headed to Scotland with us, there was an email that went out earlier this week with lots of details and lots of clicky links, things to read about and know about. We'll be sending out another email probably Monday or Tuesday of this week with some additional details specifically about the transfer to the airport at the end of the tour and then also um, some meal information. And, and some of that requires a little bit of a response if you have a special diet at all. And then we are working to put together a get together for local folks, probably on April 13th. I'm trying to nail that down. So we're hoping that will happen here in Winter Park so that if you're local, you'll be able to meet up there. Your goodies will be shipping out very soon with all of your things from CIE, plus your swag from Olive and 2U Studios. So we're very excited about the upcoming trip. I love Tracy. Look at that. My knitting bag is packed. Anything else packed? We're not worried about anything else. We're just worried about the knitting. Yeah, we need to talk about what knitting projects we're going to be taking. Hmm. We do need to talk about that. And one of them actually is something that you're doing for our travelers. Is that right? You showed it once. You want to talk about that for a quick minute? Yep, the cowl. Um, in fact, I will say I will post it in the group as well. But for those who are going on the trip, you are getting some yarn and a pattern. And um, in the pattern, you're getting a printed pattern and it has a Ravelry code on it so that you can download your copy from Ravelry. However, uh, because we're not publishing the pattern immediately, then you'll have to wait until the pattern's published. Otherwise, you put in your code. Um, Ravelry will tell you there is no pattern yet. But the codes are, should work as soon as I publish the pattern, which is coming up shortly. And we'll let you know that I'll post in the group. But but yeah, so you're getting, and I don't know why I'm saying a, it's a cow. You all saw it a couple of weeks ago, unless you didn't watch the video, you have to go back and watch it, but it's a cow pattern. And um, yeah, so you're getting some different options that you can knit the cow with if you're going along on the trip. And if you're not traveling to Scotland with us, stay tuned because you might have an opportunity to do something very similar mm -hmm. to the pattern. Is that right? Oh yeah. They'll have their chance too. You'll get your chance also. Mary yeah. says, for new UK travelers, is CIE providing an electricity converter? I believe they are. They have in the past. We'll, we'll know for sure very soon, but they typically do provide one. So we'll, we'll know very, very soon if that's included. And I'll be letting you know that as well. So they do a nice book bag and some other things. But there's I'm sitting here right now staring out at some of our Scotland swag for our travelers that's in boxes right now, all ready to be packed up very soon and shipped out or delivered if you're local, potentially that sort of thing. So very excited. 
Dion wants to know if you decided on a name for the pattern. Yeah, it's it's just a very simple because it's Scotland. And one of my favorite things about the trip is making memories. I just named it Making Memories. I love it. Yeah. So excited. All kinds of fun stuff coming up. I cannot wait to travel. And then, of course, I'm sneaking in a trip to Kentucky. Jim and I leave on Thursday for Kentucky for not quite a week um, to see the eclipse. And he's preaching and celebrating up there at a church. So, but I do plan to be here for the live next weekend. We'll make it happen one way or the other, even if it's in front of a Starbucks. So <laughs> Michelle on location, you just never know where I might pop up. That's right. I like it. Did you notice this week what happened in the Yarny U's? We did a little feature. Did you notice that? I did. It was snapped up like that. Yes, we did. Well, you know, you have to watch for the features. So features are special opportunities that we offer in the Yarny use from time to time. There's no rhyme or reason to them. We put together combinations of items that aren't don't typically come as sets in the shop, and you never know what you're going to find. And usually they're at a reduced price. Um, the feature this week was a hank of yarn and a set of stitch stoppers, stoppers for $10. It was $10, y'all. Carolyn's looking at me like, what are you doing? Giving the shop away? Always. I tell you, I got to keep an eye on her all the time. $10 for a hank of yarn, a full 100 gram hank of beautiful yarn, and for a set of cocoa knit stitch stoppers. So, and I think the stitch stoppers go for, I want to say $12 a set anyway. So there you go. So you virtually got that at a discount and the yarn for free. So I say all that to say, you just never know what's going to pop up in the features. So pay attention. When we tell you there's a feature coming, if you can at all get in there, you never know what you're going to find. Sometimes it's things that have never been in the shop. Sometimes it's things at a little bit of a discount. Sometimes it's things at a lot of a discount. And the cool thing about features are, we tell you every time, sometimes you might get an extra goodie in it and sometimes you might not. So you never know what's going to come in your package, but you'll always get what we show as the feature. So keep that in mind. Yeah, definitely. Features are super fun. And then the other thing is birthday club. So birthday club is getting ready to close, right? For May. Yes. May will be closing April 1st. And then yes. you, can, you can right now get your birthday club through the rest of the year. We've got people who order more than one birthday club. Okay. Yes, we do. Yeah, they do. It's not uncommon. Um, and May, if you are ordering in May, you get to share your birthday month with me. So you never know. I know that's your, your full incentive right there to order birthday club. Yes, everybody <laughs> wants to be in your in your birthday month. Yes. Hey, the and mechanical tie. What? A hard and fast rule for this one because of our um, impending trip to Scotland. Um, and I have to get subscription stuff dyed and out. That means um, April 1st. Um, yeah, you love order in, just so you know. All right. Yeah. Go Sometimes ahead. we fudge it a little bit because we forget to take it off the website. Um, but yeah, hard and fast rule on there. Tracy wants to know the date of our local meetup. We're thinking it will be the 13th. That would be the plan. So um, I actually scheduled it and scheduled it for the wrong time of day. So I've got to call the place back and see if they can push it back a little bit. And the reason I scheduled it for the wrong time of day is because I forgot, didn't have my calendar in front of me, that the botanical scarf dye experience is also happening on April 13th, right here at Needleworks. And you've got the scarves all prepped and cured. Is that right? They're still curing? They're curing now. Yep. And um, I, I don't know why I didn't bring one of my dyed scarves. I'm never as prepared as you are. Um, maybe next week I'll remember to bring it. But anyway, we only have two spots left anyway. To If you want to come dye a nice sized silk scarf with us using natural dyes, um, yeah. And then to get instructions on how you can do it yourself at home, then sign up. We have two time slots and one spot available in each time slot. Cool. So the link is available in your newsletter this week. Yeah. That's... So Lonnie wants to know, is the goodie the same each month for birthday club? They are similar. Um, most, uh, they, we shift some things around. So if you're ordering a second birthday club, just let us know that. We try to pay attention to that to make sure you don't get double the same goodie. But pay it, um, put a note in there that it's your second one and we'll try to shift things up for you a little bit. So as best we can. 
Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, there's some people going on a Scotland trip with spouses who who the the knitter or the 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 female shall I, the crafter, let's say it like that, the crafter selected knit and talked the spouse into selecting crochet so they get double the the the, the yarn and the stuff like that. So, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Because the non-crafters get different swag, is that right? Yes, the non-crafters are getting some different items. Absolutely. So it's probably nice of the spouse to give up their swag. Mm. Yeah, it is nice, isn't it? Yeah. Is May birthday goodie the same as November goodie? Probably not. Probably not. We've gone through some new goodies. Mm. So probably not. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you know what else is coming to an end? What? No limits pre-order. Oh, yeah. So, and it's been going. Um, I'm going to have lots to die up. So that will come down Monday, just so you all know, because I got to get those died up. So if you are thinking you want some no limits and because it is a time consuming die process um, and because you don't want the, you know, the thrill of it to wear off, it probably won't be back in the in the shop for a while. I mean, if and I might die up a few extra skeins if I have room in the pots, but it all depends on what, you know, on how much room and how much time I have. So, well, I was going to say that we all of the olive into you yarn is extremely stashable, of course, but no limits is one of those. I don't say this often. It's one of those that you really, really, really want to get it in your stash, even if you don't have an immediate project for it. You want to get it in your stash while the pre-order is available because she doesn't die it that frequently, as she said. And because it is so incredibly versatile. So if you're wanting to work on a sweater or a project and you've got like a really nice solid or, or tonal color in mind and you just can't, you know, you're not sure what you want to go with it, No Limits will win virtually every time. It's a great yarn for that purpose. So it's a great yarn to stash in your favorite bases. I know some people sometimes get more than one base of it. So you want to have it in your stash because it is so versatile and it's dyed so infrequently. I just, I just can't make her spring into action that often to dye it. I don't know. I don't know. So she tries, you know, I try, I try. So anyway, that's a yarn that you definitely want to keep happy Easter. If you celebrate, I know Passover, I believe just ended last night, I do believe. So we hope you had a good Passover. If you celebrate Passover and, Easter for all those people. I know our Easter vigil um, is tonight, which it's my favorite service of the entire year. And I always beg to read every year. There's several readers. We read the old stories from the Old Testament and I have the creation story and I love reading. And that service is tonight, the Easter vigil. And then of course the big Easter services tomorrow. So we did Monday, Thursday, Good Friday. Now today's the Easter vigil and then the big Easter service tomorrow. So wh whatever you celebrate, we hope that you've had a good weekend and we hope that you found some time to do some knitting or some crochet. Yeah. You know, Morgan was trying to talk me into we should celebrate Holy Week the way people who um, celebrate Hanukkah, those who choose to give a gift every day of Hanukkah, that we should be giving gifts every day of Holy Week. I was like, yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't think so. Got that all figured out. Yeah, I know. But anyway, so, hey, I did want to mention if you're in Die Live Plus Club, if you didn't watch Thursday night's video, go check it out because we picked out the colors that we'll be using for the next Die Live. So I want to watch the video. I don't know the colors you're using. Yeah, we've never chosen colors like this, so it, it should be interesting. I did I did give some disclaimers like I'm allowed to to, you know, have some leeway in these areas because, yeah. <laughs> Your name is on it. You are dying. It. <laughs> That's right. I can't be sending out just anything. So yeah, <laughs> that makes really good sense. Yeah, um, absolutely good sense. Oh, Passover is April 22nd. You know what? Okay. So here's what I did. Thank you, Doris. I was listening. I, I asked um, our good friend, Alexa, when Passover was, and you know what? I heard March and she said, April. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. Thank you. So if you're looking towards Passover, yes, we hope you have a, a good Passover. And I'm sorry that I, I I botched that. I apologize. Please forgive me. I did ask the question and I was like, oh, it just ended last night. No, it's probably the 22nd through the 29th of April, I bet. Because I remember 
I thought I heard the 29th and today is the 30th. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Purim. Yes. Okay. I apologize. I tried and I blew it. What can I say? Oh, but I was thinking of everybody who celebrated those holidays. So at least there's that. Yeah. I am definitely aware of that. And you said something that made me remember something that I wanted to mention. And now it's out of my head because as I like to tell people, I'm over 50. Happens. Yeah, I know. It's there one minute and the next minute it's in another state. Hey, in another state indeed. Hey, I wonder, do you think you're going to get your yoon done before we travel to Scotland? I don't know. I mean, I got to start knitting on it more, but you did help me decide. I think what I'm going to do today is I'm going to pull my, um, my measuring tape out of here and I'm going to measure it and see where I'm at. I could, you know what, maybe I, what I should do is probably try it on, make sure it's past. Well, I know it's past the important parts. So yeah. So maybe I'll look at counting my stitches today, see where I'm at and just go ahead and split. All right. I'm bringing mine tomorrow, like you said. So bring yeah. your cable. I'll try it on. I'll have to go in the bathroom at Starbucks or put it on. I'll wear a tight fitting shirt so I can go on yeah. over my shirt. Yep. That's what I'll do. Okay. So cool. stay tuned in the Yarn of Use for pictures of Michelle trying on her yoon in the Starbucks parking lot. At 6.30 in the morning. At 6.30 in the morning. Because that's what time we meet to exchange yarn now, y'all. 6.30 on Sunday mornings. Do you believe that? We're committed or should be committed. No. I'm not sure. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I am not sure. Hey, if you are a lurker in the Yarna Use, we invite you to start posting pictures of your whips, of your finished objects, and of your questions. We want to hear from you in the Yarna Use. Invite your friends to participate. The more Yarna Use, the merrier. It is one of the most supportive and no drama zones on the internet, I'm convinced. We don't talk about politics ever. And we don't have drama ever. And we don't even have to moderate to make sure that happens. Our yarn use, no, and they stay away. Y'all can do whatever you want on your personal pages and sometimes do. But in the yarn use, it is quiet and peaceful and drama free. So we invite you to participate in this wonderfully supportive, caring group that we just are lucky and fortunate to be a part of. So absolutely, absolutely. All right, everybody, any parting shots, Carolyn? I don't think so. Happy Easter. See you next time. See you next time. We'll see you in the Yarn of Yous. Take care. Bye. Bye.